starting things off for the Grand Power P1D, D as in decocker mode, with uh, full mag plus one. There's already a mag in there. That's going to get in the way, isn't it? Good thing I've got ginormous hands. So we throw in our plus one decock and leaving it there. We'll pull out that one, put in our full magazine, giving us now 16 rounds of capacity. See how coolly I dropped that. And we've got a piece of steel at about 15 yards. and It's an ABC zone target just for me to aim at. Uh, see how this gun runs when it's stuffed. So smooth, pops right back on target. That was almost too easy. All right, so before I forget, since I promised you in the tabletop, I'd show you how I disassemble, reassemble using my chest, since I couldn't do that in the tabletop view. So we see we've got a clear firearm here. Slide forward pulling down on both sides of the takedown with the middle finger hooking on the trigger guard. I put the grip of it against my chest so I've got something to pull against. Come back, up over the top, and the gun's apart. Reassembly, reversing that. Easiest done a little bit upside down so the barrel doesn't rotate on you. Pulling down on the takedown knobs, pulling this back over the top, and it's back together. It is easy to do when you've got a method. It just was difficult for me to do on the tabletop. So there you go. What's for dinner starts off at 85 grain and runs all the way up to 165 grain. You can see we've got three loads of each type. We're testing to see if the gun will pick up from slide lock, if the round generates enough energy to cycle the gun, and then also to produce slide lock. The third round is really a bonus. Testing the magazine's capability is done in the full mag plus one. This is just looking to see what round works for what. And as you can see, they all have different bullet profiles, different ogives, and different front surface areas to interact with the feed ramp. So let's see how the Starting things off, our lightest is the 85 grain hollow point frangible load. This is the Night Ops from Ammo Inc. Uh, it has a non incendiary tracer on it that uh, we won't see today because it's too bright out here, but it's our lightest load for target number one. And uh, I'll start things off decocked. So first shot double action, rest will be single action. That single is crisp after the double. Lock the slide back. Now we're on to the Winchester Super Clean 90 grain. This is a zinc core lead free round that is snubby. And uh, before any of you ask about the garbage bag over the target, not five minutes ago it was dumping rain out here. It's Oregon, we gotta live with these things. Starting off in double action. This is because you guys always complain that I'm not doing the double. Through one, lock the slide back. No issues with these light loads. Now into 108 grain uh, at 1,312 feet per second for a combined 413 foot-pounds of energy. Pretty hard hitter, uh, the monolithic hollow point from Norma. Single still surprises me after the double. Lock the slide back. And now we finally hit the American weight of 115 grain with Hornady's American Gunner. This is a uh, hollow point. This is their affordable hollow point line. The bullet has a very narrow 
point to it, uh, almost 380-esque, but the weight, of course, is appropriate for 9 mil for target number four. And we got side lock. Coming in at 115 grain as well is Blazer Aluminum or Aluminium for our British fan out there. The aluminum cases uh, expand and contract heat and cool at a different rate than brass. So sometimes that can cause extraction issues. That's why some companies don't recommend them. Target number five. wind might be obscuring your view there, but the holes are there. You can take my word for it. All right, next up we have Barnall's steel cased full metal jacket in 115 grain. First round snuck up on me. All right, and next we have Archon's black nickel plated hollow point. It's 124 grains. And next we have Federal's Low Recoil Hydroshock in 135 grain. one is a snappy load. Alright, and next we have a brass jacketed hollow point by Remington, and this one's at 147 grain. It's the golden saber variety. All right, and next we have the Stealth 165 grain, very sleek little round. Flinch. those. All right, so for five shots at seven yards, we're going to use the match, the Nosler match braid in 115 grain. I'll shoot at the left circle square. Excuse me, right.
And for my five shots from seven-ish yards, we're gonna be using the uh, Nauser Match 115 grain again. And by viewer request, starting off decocked. You guys are rough. All right, there we go. So my impressions of the Grand Power P1D, this thing is fun to shoot. Um, when you have it on single action though, that first shot can sneak up on you sometimes. That's just lack of experience on my part. It's light in the hand, it's very well balanced even when the, a full mag is not in it. Um, it doesn't change the weight too much when you when you put the mag in. I appreciate the the three white dot sights front and rear. Um, helps me aim better. And overall, it just it just fits well in the hand. It's not too wide. I think on a on a day when I was wearing something less revealing or more concealing, I could probably carry this very comfortably. So it's no secret that. I love the ground powers. I have, uh, well, this is, I think, my sixth handgun in the lineup, and then I've got the Strebogs. Heck, I've got a K100 on my hip as we speak because, uh, well, they're comfortable. You got the four different back straps to that change not only the length of pull for you, but also the breadth of the gun to fit just about any hand. Ambi controls, which I love because using my middle finger to drop the magazine usually means I don't have to change my grip at all. Functioning ambi controls from both sides. And then that absurd accuracy. Um, if you watched our stuff from our visit to Grand Power, you understand the tight tolerances, and that's part of why they have such accuracy and reliability. There is a disclaimer though. Much like a fine European sports car, this fine European pistol does require a little more maintenance than your run-of-the-mill gun. They need to be lubricated and kept clean, but uh, I think the performance is worth it.